Did you get it live? I did. Ah. But it's still a static screen. Mm -hmm. There's probably sound though, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, SLC Live. We want to welcome you guys. Today we got Clayton. Clayton back in videos. We had to talk him out of R&D <laughs> to get over here. But we've had a couple guys asking about some new patterns of tote bags, and we thought that uh, we would share one with you. So we came up with this new pattern, and we had, you can see some bags out front here. We had some employees test the pattern out. Got one with hair on there, some one with Safiano leather, and some oil tan. So Clayton is going to go through with us today and uh, make one of them. We're going to make the medium tote. So let me move this stuff out of the way, and then we can see what's going on. Yeah, that'd be great. So like you said, the pattern comes with a, pat with a medium and a large tote. And then you've got the option of stitching your handles on, kind of like you see here. And then the one I'm going to make today is just like this. This is the large version, and it's got the handles riveted on. Makes it a little bit more simple. All right, so the materials I chose is uh, uh, one of our new items, our chip tan bison. Uh, comes to us, uh, what is it, a four to five ounce? Yep. And uh, I've got it split down to about a two to three here, and I paired it with one of our $50 oil tan sides, uh, just an odd lot you can find. Also split down to two to three, so all in all, you got a good five to six ounce bag. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully everybody can hear okay. Yeah. So I got my pattern cut out already. I always like to stick my paper patterns onto Bontex. So you can use cardboard, anything a little bit stiffer than just a piece of paper. It helps preserve your patterns to help you know make them reusable and a little bit easier to trace around. So I've got my main body of the medium tote cut out as well as the tote strap. And you got the same strap that goes on the medium and large. Now you can see here I've already got my holes punched where I'm gonna mark for the rivets to attach the straps. If you're gonna sew the straps on, uh, you can do this. I like to punch a hole in the corner of wherever I'll be placing my straps and you can mark those with a little marking pin as well as up here and that'll just be your serve as an indicator of where to place your straps whenever you sew them on. Yeah, we'll jump over to uh, the other camera so they can see what's going on the table on camera too. There you go. Yeah, yeah there you go. So like I was showing you, I've got these indicators cut out here where you can kind of mark. Yeah, down just a little bit there. Probably. Down just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So yeah. Little marking indicators there. If you're going to do the closure tab option, you can mark where your closure tab will be placed. Uh, today we're just going to do a super simple one. Like I said, we're going to rivet the handles on and I'm going to skip the closure tab, make it a little bit quicker. So I've already got my leather glued up. It's usually it's a good idea. This will be the outside of the bag. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and make sure everything's lined up. It's usually pretty good practice to go ahead and trim off any excess. That way you don't accidentally cut your pattern out and realize you don't have any leather on the back side. So you, you said you did yours, you backed it with the Bontex on there, right? Yeah. Just to stiffen it up a little bit. Then you can hang that on the wall and just kind of keep it there. And right. Makes some of those paper patterns you have that... Makes it a lot easier to trace around too. Man. Right. I always struggle trying to trace around paper. Tracing's hard. <laughs> Be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get rid of some of this here. So that we know we're not... We had some good mornings come in, but no locations of anybody yet. So maybe we'll get some locations. People. Oh, yeah? Some from England. We've had some from Scotland, Texas. That's pretty cool. Yeah, lots of foreign countries is like Texas. That's neat, man. <laughs> Texas is pretty much a country on its own. So this bag is, is pretty simple. We consider this more of like a... A beginner or intermediate type of one? Yeah, so this, this pattern is designed purely for beginners, pretty much. We tried to make it pretty simple, just like the name says, so simple. And, uh, it, uh, yeah, I mean, basically what we did, you saw the bags that our employees yeah. made. So we asked for volunteers of our employees that really had no leather craft experience uh, to test out the pattern and get us some feedback on it. And so far, it's been pretty good. We haven't had to make too many edits to the instructions or the pattern, and everybody was able to follow the instructions and, you know, turned out some pretty decent bags. Yes, yeah, so we already put it into production. We got it in the printer, so the number on that is 144-101. Uh, 
or you can go to our website and you can find it in the, the new items. But we got that new, the chipped in that you're using, and then you said the $50 oil tan side, but you can make one out of them, maybe two mediums out of maybe a 20, uh, the $20 oil tan side, maybe just yeah. one, uh, the $30 oil tan side. You may be able to modify the pattern a little bit and make a smaller bag out of it. All right, so I got all my corners marked. Since it's a rectangular shape, and you're mostly cutting straight lines. You don't have to mark the whole line. And then I got my rivet holes marked, my center mark, where the bag will fold, and uh, should be good to go. Just make sure you're paying attention. If you're going to sew the handles on, you don't need to mark the rivet holes. You don't need to cut them, but uh, you guys can figure that out. All right. So you're just going to line up your straight edge yep. on your marks. Yep. Make sure you got a good sharp razor blade if you're using some soft leather. Yeah, we had a question about that last week about making some cuts on, making straight cuts and not getting it to fold up. If you're just putting pressure on that, that ruler, your straight edge, and your knife is nice and sharp. And one thing that I always kind of notice you, you do is you make two or three cuts in the same spot. So you're not trying to cut through all the layers at once. Exactly. I mean, it helps a lot. And also the angle of your razor blade. If you can make, you know, make a few passes and keep the angle of your, of your razor blade down so you're slicing the leather. Yeah. And instead, if you have it real steep like that, you'll end up pushing it. Yeah. So we'll watch you, we'll watch you cut across this. It should be a pretty good shot here to see. Yeah. I always try to cut to the inside of my marks. Yeah. And it is worth taking your time on cutting, man. You only get to cut once, is you that what you're saying? You only get to cut once, yeah. <laughs> you might as well take your time and not mess it up. Especially when you're on YouTube Live. Don't mess it up. We have Joshua there. He said he just pulled up to the house for lunch while he's watching his video and there was two SLC boxes waiting for him. Nice. We got we got Richard in here from Scotland. Uh, Richard, we just sent him, I believe, what did he win? Did he win the dice bag or the field note? He won the field note. <clears throat> won the field note journey, uh, journal that Denny did. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Denny, Denny showed off the uh, Sheridan style tooling pattern that we have and he finished it up off off the video and Richard won that. Nice. So that's kind of the plan that we're going to be doing with this bag as well. Is same kind of deal. We'll put up a deal on uh, Facebook and Instagram and just like and share that picture. Harder to share on Instagram. So if you just you just comment on it, that'll get you entered to win. You're gonna give my bag away. Yeah, so we appreciate you making it for us. We can give away. <laughs> Thought maybe Rusty and Kevin would sneak in here. Well, it's not over yet. Yeah. So what is your, I know we've talked about it on other recorded videos we had. What is your job here, Clayton? Well, right now I'm the director of uh, research and development and production. So I help manage our research and development department which was where this came from and a lot of other patterns kits we test a lot of products that we get in we try to test all of them but it's hard we got so many darn products coming through so quickly um, and I talk on the phone a lot some of you might have talked to me before if you had any questions on dyeing leather picking out appropriate leather for different projects yeah and emails I know you answer a lot of emails a lot too. of emails yeah usually yeah. when I come to bug you're like I'm trying to answer emails <laughs> yeah <laughs> emails cases submitted to the website that kind of thing so I've been helping out with production for the past eight months or so been doing the research and development for a few years and before that, I just did just managed production department. So, yeah. So when you first came on the Springfield Leather, what were you doing? Uh, I came on as a shop associate originally, back whenever there was uh, the entire shop was comprised of about three people. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of growing since then. Yeah, for sure. I came on eight years ago, and we had roughly thirty-five people. And uh, man, it's gotten a lot bigger since then. Yeah, before then. all the pandemic, I think we had just over 90, and we may be back around 70 employees and making things happen. You guys <laughs> keep us busy, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt. 
All right, let's go ahead and punch our rivet holes. We'll have this piece ready to go. And then move the camera over. You switch to one real quick there, Chad? Yep. And then you can go back to... So we kind of have some other leathers that we do suggest that you could use uh, with it. I think we've got a screen with some numbers on there as well while you punch these holes. So we have one of the special backside bundles sitting here, and then uh, one of the bags that we had that one of the employees had made was with that Safiano, which is what, like a coach style of leather? Mm -hmm. See a lot of coach or Michael Kors or yeah. a lot of those fancy handbags made out of it. All right, so a lot of times you can get your handle, you can Go cut your two handles out of your piece of leather that you glue up on your tote. With the side that I had, I had just enough room to get the toad out without really getting the handles, but I had another piece of leather that I glued up that kind of came off the lower section of the belly, and I just glued up to be able to cut the two handles out of. They're just three quarters of an inch wide, about, oh, I don't know, 28 inches long, something like that. Yeah. So, since we got so our So you made a straight edge on there already, right? Yeah, it's already straight edged, and that way I can just kind of line up the edge of my pattern and go ahead and we'll mark the ends, one section of the side, and our rivet holes. Yeah, I'll we'll jump back over to camera two there. So we've been trying to, I know this is the first live that you've been in, Clayton, but we've been trying to up our game here in the camera department and be, be better about showing what we got going on and not making people sick by moving a camera around everywhere. So right. hopefully this makes it more enjoy enjoy enjoyable. English is still hard to say, though. <laughs> English is tough, man. Yeah, it's a tough language. It's almost as tough as tracing. Yep. Again, I always cut to the inside of your lines. Are you working on any uh, personal projects that you got going on, Clayton? Uh, no, not right now. Well, I say that. I do have a conceal and carry belt to make for my little sister. Other than that, I've pretty much tied up most of what I got going on. Yeah. But besides always working on my boat, I guess that's a personal project. <laughs> I feel like everybody works on When somebody has a boat, they're usually working usually on it. Usually working on it, yeah. I picked a good one to work on, too. Keeps me busy. All right, so that's one handle. We'll go ahead and trace the second one and cut it out. So what brought you to Springfield Leather in the first place? Craigslist. Craigslist? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any leather experience at all. Yeah. I was, uh, I mean, eight years ago, man, I was in college and delivering pizzas and living the life and Decided I wanted something more than just living off pizza tips. Yeah, when they gave you tips. <laughs> when they gave me tips or or beer or, you know, whatever <laughs> they had at hand. <laughs> it depends on how far they were into their evening. Try to tip me with a slice of pizza I just gave them or something, you know. Right. So Dan, Dan is actually one of the guys that has been begging us to do a uh, video on a tote bag. And he has a question about the silver marking pin mm -hmm. and getting it back off the leather. I assume, Dan, you're using the silver marking pin? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, so we sell these little rubber, we call them erasers. But uh, usually you can just rub it with an eraser, or a lot of times you just rub it with your thumb. See, it'll come right off. We got a couple marks right there. So I know we have those on our website too, that silver marking pen. Pretty yeah, handy. Yeah, they're super handy. They're nice. Very erasable. They, you know, they come off veg tan pretty well, but they'll leave a little bit of gray streak on a natural veg tan. Where did I put that punch down at? Uh, right on the back side of that granite. Uh, there's nope. one. That's the wrong size. But it'll do. Uh, did you put it in your tool belt? 
Maybe. All right, well, I'm no help. He has both. So I know with oil tans, even for myself, I'll use the silver marking pen more than I would, you know, anything else. Mm -hmm. We come off oil tans really easily. I know when Denny does veg tan leather, he's using uh, a stylus yeah. to usually mark it. Yeah, that's usually pretty good practice. All right, we got our handles cut. We got our main body of the tote bag cut. So let's go ahead and stick our handles on. That'll make our life a little bit easier riveting them before it's all the way assembled. So to rivet these suckers on, I've got, let's see, I'm just making a mess here. This is, this is just how I work. <laughs> That's why you have a big table for you. Exactly. Uh, so I've got some shotgun shell rivets. They're little miniature 12 gauge shotgun shell caps, which are kind of cool. Some people like them. Yeah, and they come with they come with a special handy dandy little setter that keeps you from crushing the the cap down. So we're gonna take our posts. Yeah, we put the link for that in in the description if anybody wants to use those as well. So on the back side of it is it, it's just a single cap rivet. Yeah, on the back side it's just like a single cap. Not ugly or anything, but it's just not decorative. So the cool thing about this pattern is it is a reversible pattern. That may be the only thing with using that rivet that may look, it could look different. Could look a little out of place, but you're the only one that's really gonna notice, you know, right. since you made it. But, um, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, you could use a double cap rivet, yeah. a post, and it would be just fine. Oh, so you could just use that double cap post on there and then it'd just be a cap on the one side uh -huh. and then a shotgun shell on whatever side you want that to be on. Certainly could. I'm going to knock all my rivets off there. I know. Now you're going to hammer, so... Hopefully the audio catches it and you don't have to turn your speakers down, but this is your warning. <laughs> all right. Kind of hold those suckers on there. They don't really pop on like a regular double cap. That at all. So with this, the special rivet setter it has a, a deal on the inside, so it's not mashing the, not mashing that shotgun shell. Yeah, I, think I set that first one a little bit too hard, but it'll hold. So how will you know if you set it too hard? Kind of mushroom out the leather, or yeah, what are you, you looking at? See, it's kind of imprinting down in the leather right there. This one yeah. sits on top a little bit better, and it just looks a little nicer. It really doesn't take too much force for these little tiny rivets. So and all the instructions are included in with this as well. Yeah, yeah. I think our people back there in R&D wrote some pretty, pretty yeah. fine instructions with pictures to boot. Yeah, I'll throw it down there. There you go. So lots of instructions that are in there, and it kind of tells you the, the measurements that should come out, uh, and then what we kind of recommend for the leather. If you get, a, what, about an eight, eight square foot piece of leather, and if you want it to be reversible, then you would just get two pieces of it that right. are foot or 16 foot. Yeah, if you're doing a single layer of leather for the whole tote, you know, you're gonna probably gonna want a, at least a four to five, five to six, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but if you're doing the, the reversible or a line tote like this one, you're probably gonna want a couple pieces of like two to three ounce. Yeah. Maybe a two to three and a three to four if you wanted to. Unfolding these. This pattern. If you haven't ever gotten a pattern from us before, we put it out on a pretty big piece of paper there. So you can see it yeah, face up. That's what Clayton cut out and then he put on Bontex. So yeah. if I can fold it back up, it's like a map. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw something a little extra on here. I've got a little uh, push gate swivel clasp that I'm just going to stick onto the strap between the rivets. And that'll be a little spot where you can hook your keys to or stick a tassel on or something. And we've got some time left over here. I'll show you guys, I'll make a little tassel with one of our tassel caps. So. Yeah, that should match pretty well with it being antique brass as well. Yeah. Yeah, it'll look pretty good.
I never did deliver pizza. You didn't deliver pizza? No, have you ever had... How was that? A job, or was it entertaining at times? It was pretty entertaining. <laughs> I enjoyed it. You don't know what people are going to be wearing or not wearing when they answer the door. Right? <laughs> We're giving you tips and beers if you're, yeah. if you're getting tips I'm and beers. I'm just trying to give you whatever so they can get their pizza, you know? <laughs> you kind of got a license to speed as a delivery man. And <laughs> yeah. no, I enjoyed it. I was pretty young. Bam, handles attached. Yep. Now, if you were going to finish, say you would finish the edges, would you paint yours or... Um, so... With this being a chrome tan, most of these bags are probably going to be made out of chrome tan leather. Yeah. Um, you know, you could just burnish it natural with something like Tokenol or Toco Pro. Yeah. Which is a pretty good product. It'll slick it down nice. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'd paint the edges. Just paint it. Yeah. yeah. Something with like uh, Fenichi. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're actually getting ready to sell those Fenichi. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the lovely display we have here in the store. I know. <laughs> Waiting on me to get all the pictures done. Yeah, we've got, <laughs> and that's and that's more products I need to test too. Yeah, we've been using. Have we been using that in the shop? Yeah, we yeah. use the the Finici Edge paint, but I think there's a few other products that we got yeah, from there's them a, that I hadn't used before. A water stain or something like that, and mm -hmm. then some a gloss and a mat. All right. So this toe is going to be sewn and then flip sewn inside out and then flip. Uh, so basically it's going to be stuck down like this and I'm using some eighth inch basting tape. Um, that way we can make sure it's not going to show in the seam. If you want to glue it, you could glue it with, uh, you know, a water-based cement like Aqualim 315 and this oil tan or chrome tan is dry enough. You could also use a solvent base and it'd probably stick just fine. Uh, but you just want to be sure not to glue too far into your seam so that whenever you flip it inside out, you'll see glue or tape. Hence the eighth inch basting tape. So. The pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance, which is actually kind of important whenever you're sewing up these sides so that your bottom will match up. And I'll kind of show you what I mean later. That stuff's pretty handy, that eighth inch one. Yeah, we haven't had it very long. No, we haven't. Good question. You want to show it in the video? Oh, yeah. I actually have them sitting here. So um, Carl was asking about the... Uh, whoop, sorry, I jumped in front of the camera there. Chad switched too early on me. Uh, so this is the the little one that we had had, right? The 50 gram. If I can find the front of it. There you go. Tell me what it is, then. Toco Pro. This is the Toco Pro burnishing uh, gum. So we had the... The 50, now we got that size of it, which is the 100. I was trying to see on there, but I can't read it because it's in Japanese. <laughs> oh, there it is at the top, 100 gram. And then, if you're feeling fancy, you can get 500 grams of it. So, Damn three me. sizes of the Toco Pro. Uh, the Token All, we've had in the, in the larger sizes. There's We haven't really found any difference between them other than... What the bottle looks like. Yeah, really not the, much difference. The token all does come in uh, black and then a brown. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my seam here. I got this stuck down. And when you're sticking it down, really, it's important to make sure that your, your top edges of the tote right here stay flush. I see that. Mine has kind of pulled away a little bit. So that's going to be the top of your bag. So you want it to look nice. I'm going to go ahead and mark my quarter inch seam allowance. So you just measure that on a ruler? Yep. Just set your wing divider on your ruler for just, I do it just a hair over quarter inch to compensate for riding on the edge of the leather. And I like to mark my seams. I think it's just good practice. Yeah, I think right. it is too because I have trouble. <laughs> I have trouble following a straight line. All right, let's switch over to the, there we go. Hopefully everybody, this is probably the hard shot to set up. So hopefully we can kind of see what he's got going on. So you got a, a roller guide on there as well. Yeah, yeah, and that will help me hold my my quarter inch seam allowance pretty true. If I didn't have that, then uh, it's a little more difficult, but it's not too bad. This is the Cobra Class Three heavy stitcher. It's super manageable. So could you do this on a twenty six? Yeah, twenty six. You could do it on an eighteen, a Class Twenty. Uh, 
Honestly, we just chose the cylinder arm machine because it was easier to film. Right. Easier to get in here. And we had one in the shop that we could bring over. Right. All right, so it's kind of hard to hear through the sewing, so we'll just sew and then... So in the pattern as well, um, there's this... There's not the instructions for hand stitching and doing a saddle stitch, but that's another way that we recommend that you could sew it together and just punch along that punch along that edge and stitch it by hand. Yeah, you by no means have to have a sewing machine to do this project. It's just it's not even that much hand stitching. It is when you're doing a live video though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. Yeah, you could sew this on a class four as, as well. Yeah. The class three and four are pretty uh, similar. The big difference between them is the cylinder arm length. Yeah, exactly. Same same basic machine. The four's just got the deeper throat on it. My stitch is cut here. Yeah, so we're just can't see it because you're on the back side of the machine there. Of course. But just clipping off your edges and then, uh, or the ends of your thread, pulling them through to one side so at least only one side of it has the burning the threads down. Yeah. Joshua's asking which machine this is again. Oh, uh, Joshua, this is a class three. Yeah, Cobra class three heavy, heavy stitcher. Yeah. So if we switch back over to the machine right quick, the three has this shorter throat on it where a class four is going to be a little bit longer. And then the 26, I believe, is close to this class 3. It's just not quite as heavy duty. It's close to, like, the class 20, the flatbed class 20. Right. So you could still do this on the 20 and the 18. The 18 is also a flatbed. Yeah. How about, we have that high lead 3, what, 315? High lead is it 318? Oh, 318, you're right. Could we do that with, could, could you do that on the, the high lead machine? Probably so. You might want to use a little bit thinner leather. There's one spot, whenever we sew these corners, I'll show you, that might get a little bit tricky. Yeah. Uh, but even in that one little spot, it wouldn't be bad to hand stitch either. So I've got it sewed up with my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and trim off some of this excess. Just, just don't need that much of a seam on the inside of a bag. So we just leave that... We just put it in there so it makes it a little easier to sew. Yeah. And you can trim away after you get done. A little more control. Make sure you don't your uh, bottom layer doesn't fall off on the back side or anything. So, I'm, I mean, what, you cut through it about six times before it came off. I'll try to do it all in one pass. No, because it'll, it'll bunch up. You know, we won't get as clean of a cut. And again, a good sharp razor blade is the ticket. Yeah. Richard says he's old school. That's all right, Richard. I think most of the employees here that, that made this bag, we made them hand stitch it. Yeah. Yeah, most everybody did hand stitching for sure. All right, so we got our sides sewn up. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole bag, I guess, besides flipping it inside out. Now, I mentioned the quarter inch seam allowance is kind of important. Go back to that camera two there, Chad. And that allows you to crease this bag right to where these corners will line up. It'll fold right in those corners. And you just kind of get it as straight as possible. I mean, if you're really concerned about it, you can kind of glue in there and get that glued shut tight. I'm just going to try and stitch it by holding it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. What if along this, this scene that we sewed together, what if we did, like, uh, copper rivets? Yeah, that worked fine. I mean, you could assemble the whole bag with rivets if you wanted yeah. to. It wouldn't be Up too to bad. You, your, your kind of style. That'd All be right. kind of neat. Back to the sewing machine. Yeah. Now, this is a kind of tricky stitch on a, on a machine. It's a bit of a tricky stitch just getting the leather. This is where that, tight. you know, it's a little bit much for the high lead 318. Right. Once you get to the center of this and you're going over each of the seams, it gets to be a, a pretty thick piece. It's still not really a problem for 26. No, nah, you should be able to do it. Mm 
Not too shabby. No, it's not too bad at all. So I had you do it instead because I wouldn't make a mess of it. <laughs> Also, when you're doing that hand stitching, it, it's going to be kind of more finished than a machine can make it on both sides and make it really look nice and reversible. Yeah, that's true. Hand stitching, you can make it look really nice. Guess if you had your machine, your knots tied really well, then you could do contrasting and have your bobbin a different color. Yeah. Yep. layer lined up there. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab one of the other patterns that we have coming out soon. Go for it. Bro. I'll get a I'll get a finished finished product done. Alright, we got our stitch locked. The back sewn up. I'm just gonna trim these threads real quick. I like to pull them through to the back side. That way, I don't have to burn them on one side, and the other side stays looking pretty good. All right. Back to the table here. Take my lighter out again. My thread burner. Burning off those threads again. Well, that was quick. I know. This one is still in the development stage. Yeah, I'd like to release it next week. We're, we're getting there. We're working on instructions for it. Yeah. Um, but it's a full leather duffel bag and we're when, planning on doing a kit. Yeah. Oh, so you can get, so we'll give the leather with, with it as well. That's what we're hoping to do. pattern and it. That's what we're hoping to do. So you'll get a pattern and a kit in the yeah, same so same it around here. It's got a little pocket on the front. So you can go through the kit, make it the first time with all your parts cut out for you, and then you'll have the pattern to, oh, to so replicate when, it on later. On the kit, we'll cut out the parts for you. Right. Nice. Ours is filled with paper at the moment to keep it stuffed up. All right, I'm, I'm excited about this one as well. Use my... Leather shears here to kind of trim this seam up so it's not quite so thick. Should be good. Do the other side. So you're just doing kind of what you did on the sides of it, just need to do it with scissors instead? Yeah, you could do it with a knife if you wanted to. Scissors is sometimes an easier bet with these. Well, that's not super pretty, but that'll work. <laughs> well, I see Dan and, and Joshua kind of sharing some conversation um, back and forth about the machines. One of the great things about these Cobra machines with us is this is the machine that we use in our shop. Yeah. We use just Cobra. We use the 20s in uh, kind of the wallet area that we have, and then the heavy machines we use over in the R&D area. So we have a lot of knowledge that's here, Rusty and then uh, Jim as well have knowledge and we can not only sell you the machine, but answer your questions. So yeah, the duffel will be a pattern. Yeah. So you can buy it. It'll be just, just like this. Um, and then like Clayton was saying, it's also going to be a, a kit as well. I guess I could turn the camera and shoot it down the hallway and you can see into the clicking room. So we would click out. If this one's not a kit, but say it was, you would get a piece of leather that's cut just like this already for you to just assemble it. All you would be doing is a stitch and you wouldn't have to cut it out. So with the duffel, you won't have to cut out all the parts if you get the kit. But the pattern, you would you would be doing it like this. Exactly. So turning it inside out. Yeah. So you'd be a little careful whenever you're turning it inside out not to push too hard on your seams. A, you don't want to break any thread. And B, sometimes your seams will pop out a little further than you want and show some of that thread inside. So I just kind of push them out a little bit. Once you start to see a little bit of thread, you can kind of train the leather by creasing it down like that. 
Could you put another piece of leather kind of over the top of her and just ham hammer it down a little bit to mash it a little better? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Again, you want to be a little careful. You don't have to whack it real hard. Uh, break some grain. You don't want to pop any seams or break the grain or anything. But, um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the tote bag. It's I really... mean, you've only taken 35 minutes, Clayton. <laughs> you got enough time for a tassel. So on our flash sales, if you're on there, if not, on the top of our website, we have uh, some sales in. You can click on the flash sales. And we have these tassel caps that are on there. So I'm going to make Clayton... Let me do one of these tassels. All right. Make a tassel. So there's our bag. We got our clip on the front. Yeah. So we're good to go. Set that aside. Here's our tassel cap that we have on flash sale. Yeah. With a couple screws. So I just got two two little screws on it. Before we get to that though, let's talk about this um, this leather right here. Oh yeah. The what did I call it? The bag makers bundle. Yeah, special bag makers bundle. What's the number on that? Let's see. Special bag side bundle one four four nine three five zero one zero. So the cool thing about this is you're going to get quite a few pieces in here. I think it's ninety five dollars or uh, seventy five if you're on the wholesale. Man, that's a lot of leather. I know. Look at that. So I can throw. Switch back to two there for a second, Chad. Those are sized perfectly too. Bam! Right there. This one, we got a, a neck on there. You can get the large Bam, one. there you can get the large one on there. I don't have the large pattern, but I'll show you that. This is one I just went and pulled off the shelf. Kevin gave it to me. I didn't pick it special. Another one. It's pretty good colors, too. That one's going to be close. I probably won't get one out of there, but I could, if I... You could piece reduce, it if you need to. Or... Piece it, and with this center mark here. So, say I cut down this center mark. If I cut down this center mark, if I was going to have to piece it together... I could just add a little bit on past it and then put a seam there. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be so reversible after that because you'd have that seam when you turned it the one way. But That'd you be, could do it on yeah. the inside. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That one, this one would be close. And then this brown one, easy. Oh, yeah. So, Some good so size buy, pieces of leather. If you're on wholesale, a $75 bundle, oh, you yeah. can make, what do we say, five, six bags out of that? Quite a bit. So... I think you could make your money back pretty easy. Yeah. I'd say. All right, move this bundle out of the way. What did you do with my tat? There it is. Oh, sorry, I moved it a long way away so I didn't lose it. And I also got these pieces for you. Tassel cap. Oh, got a couple of our screws. I dropped one of them on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna find that. Yeah, you keep making the lace, and I'll look for this screw. All right, so I've got a piece. Uh, this is the leather I use for the lining. Uh, I've got it to ah. about three ounce. And that should be perfect. You'll probably need about five inches, five and a half inches of width here. Let's see what I got. Found it. So I've got five and three quarter. We'll do it with that. So our tassel cap, you're going to have about three quarters of an inch deep. So I'll measure. Let's see. I'll measure about five eighths of an inch down, maybe a little over. Just quickly mark a line. And then we'll just fringe this piece. I kind of like leaving the natural edge on it, making it kind of a weird shape. I think we're done with the silk. It's kind of cool. I'm not too particular about making my fringe super even, but you can if you want to. Sit there with a ruler and measure it all out and line it up and just be fringing for about an hour. Yeah, and Dan's exactly right on that, uh, Barry. That the class three and the class four, even though it's a heavy machine, it's you can still you can still do a wallet interior on it. You think, Clayton? I've done it before. Yeah. But yeah, it takes a little setup. You know, you're putting sixty nine thread on it. You really you have to mess with the the tensioners a little bit. But yeah, you can get it going for lighter weight projects. So the question was that he was wondering if he bought too heavy of a machine and. Dan said you can buy a little bit heavier and, and go down to it. Now, if you were getting in, I think what's the other one, the class seven or whatever that they're sale, they're sewing really heavy stuff with. Oh yeah. I don't that I monstrosity don't machine. Yeah. <laughs> that may be a little too heavy. That would be tough.
Yeah, Chad, go to camera three. I'm going to turn this other one, and I'm going to point it down the, ha the hallway so they can see into the, the clicking room down here. Hopefully I can turn it around. You can see a little bit down there. There you go. Nobody's dancing around or anything. Nobody's really. doing anything silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just give them time. All right, get, jump back on that other one. All right. You can come back to camera two there. So we have, what, one, two, three, four... Five clicking machines in that room, and then the big turner, which is a splitter, and then the Komoga splitter in that room. All right. Got the fringe cut. All right. So basically, I mean, this is just going to be rolled up and stuck into that tassel cap. So I'm going to grab a little bit of adhesive here, contact adhesive. That's just a van, the van grip. Yeah. It's got quite a smell to it. It's, yeah, it's definitely solvent based. You realize that pretty quick. <laughs> so the the water base, you know, low VOC, like a the Aqualim 315 or the Evertac, something like that would probably be pretty good whenever you're gluing up this big body panel. If you're using a uh, solvent based adhesive, man, you're gonna you're gonna want some ventilation. All right, so I'm going to glue the back side. We're going to put some glue on the front side. So you're just kind of putting it right there on the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right show above it that. to us when you get done making that one. Yeah. You can see the dark line where you put it at. Yeah, right above that 5 eighths inch line. Yeah, there you go. They're good. You yep. see it a little bit. Yeah. Then put it across the back. Nice. Let that tack up for a second. Trying to get my fingers covered in glue. Yeah. What's one of the biggest projects you've made, Clayton? Probably done a, a few briefcases. Those are usually pretty involved, depending on how detailed yeah. you go on the interior. Yeah. yeah. We did that one briefcase there that I think we've shown it before that Larissa did mm -hmm. up there on the wall. Yeah. Um, that would probably be one of the biggest. I've done some some purses that were pretty involved. Never done a saddle. One day I might. Yeah, I've helped Denny work on some saddles, and <laughs> we're we need to we're gonna do a video hopefully at some point of kind of tearing one down and replacing some stuff on it. But it's it's really involved. If you need to replace like anything on it, you're pretty much tearing the whole thing apart. Yeah. Yeah. It's. He's always said you kind of got to be a glutton for punishment to right. get into saddle work. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. You did that one. It's in the catalog. Uh, that natural, that natural harness kind of adventure set that you made. Mm, yeah, it had that the bag with it, and then a telescope holder or whatever it was, view eye finder. What what do we call that? What'd you call that? I don't remember, man. It was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, it was like a viewfinder. All right, so I'm just going to roll this as tight as I can. Keep good pressure on it. Yeah. It's kind of a... Move your hand out of the way there, Clayton. All right, fine. There you go. It's kind of a... Like you're making cinnamon rolls or something. Right. <laughs> Put some frosting on there and... Just like that. Yep. I'll see if it'll fit. It should be a little, probably a little too big. Yeah. So in that case, all you got to do is unroll some. Unroll a little bit. And we'll cut, cut some off. Not a big old piece of fringe there, anyway. Just like the machines, you want to make a little get a little heavy, and then you can just cut some off. Yep. So like I said, that's a piece of three ounce leather that was about five and three quarter inches wide. Should be about five and a quarter. It'll be just about perfect, but. So we got it twisted in there real good, nice and tight. And so then we're ready to get our screws in there. Those screws are stinking hard to get in there. So they've got the little points on them, so it makes you think it'll just stab right in. It won't. 
what I do. Grab your drill, get you a drill bit on there, just, you know, just big enough to fit inside that hole. Let's get some of that leather out of there. So you're not really touching the threads there, or is it gonna kind of re-thread when you put it back in there? Is that metal soft enough to re-thread? Try not to try not to damage the threads too much. Those uh those screws mainly just screw into the leather anyhow. Just kind of holding it from pulling out. Yeah. And I guess if you did screw out some of those threads, you could just put some glue on the end of it and glue them in there. Yep. Certainly can. Now. In my opinion, I don't want to work so hard. So these screws are super long. I mean, you can see they'll pretty much go through across that entire tassel cap. So, being lazy, I guess, I like to shorten them up. You really don't need that spiky end on there. You just talked about the spiky end, now you're gonna cut it off. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. We'll just, we'll cut off a little bit, we'll do a shorter screw. Otherwise, you're never going to get that whole thing threaded in there. I might not even get this whole thing threaded in there. I'll show you what you can do if you can't. Tiny little Phillips screwdriver. And you guys will get to watch me stab my finger. Perfect. So you were just, drilling through the leather there too? Yeah. Yeah, you're just drilling through the leather to... You don't. You want to drill bit just smaller than those holes. Try not to damage the threads on it, but... There we go. And so just screw it down to where it's just flush. What's everybody else working on? What kind of projects you guys got going on? So this is on, I think we put it on the flash cell. Mm -hmm. I think we mentioned that. The tassel cap? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of neat. Make a cool little tassel. Kind of accessorize your tote bag a little bit. You could tie a key on each piece of that tassel. <laughs> you could. Be a terrible way to carry your keys. <laughs> like the janitor at the school. Yeah, I mean, tie your old keys on there so it kind of jingles like a wind chime. And Everybody really knows you're coming. Smack people with it. Use it as a weapon. All right. All right. Richard's doing wristbands. Oh, yeah. Joshua's doing gun belt and holster. Wristbands, gun belt, holsters. First ever one. Nice. First ever gun belt holster. Is that Joshua? Is that what you said? Yeah. Nice. I'm going to call that good. Maybe you can make one for Clayton's sister. <laughs> Save me the work, man. Right? All right. All right. The so moment there's of truth. Trip bag. Best part of the whole thing, your tassel. <laughs> Perfect. It didn't go on. <laughs> there you go, man. So you Beautiful. just use the leather that you used on the inside. Yeah. Nice. Maybe a little contrast on the outside. So there you go. Yeah, you had your leather glued up already. Yeah, and we used the sewing machine. But what about 45, 49 minutes? Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. I don't think it's bad at all. So simple tote bag. Anybody got any questions any other questions we can try to answer or ask why you got me here or make up answers <laughs> Clayton's not going to be answering any more emails yeah see what well, we got we got some barbecue to eat after this yeah Rusty's should be slaving away making some barbecue that's kind of his thing that he likes to do um, so we have a new we were calling it the uh, what were we calling that building over there the York building the York building but it's actually the uh, Grant Street building. Kind of a warehouse. We're going to put some pictures up for it. Oh, it's definitely a warehouse. It, Yeah, it was going to turn... I, I thought at one time production was going to be moving over there. Yeah, we did too, but uh, those guys, Rusty and Kevin, bought so much leather. There is a... Yeah. So we got that Safiano leather. I think they were talking about buying like 30,000 more feet of it. Oh, there's a ridiculous amount. I know. It's pretty cool stuff. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really short. Maybe if I move forward a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Dan says, try the totes with wax canvas and leather. Super nice. Oh, yeah. yeah we have that. What's it? Mar Martexan? Yeah, the Martexan is super cool. Very nice, heavy wax canvas. 
Yeah. Uh, kind of a water resistant type of finish on oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah, what you can make you did, a bucket out of this stuff. It'll hold water. What if you did like an oil tan on the outside and the Martex on the inside? Yeah, it'd be beautiful. You gotta be careful with some wax canvases though, if they get real hot. We had a one of our employees uh trim one of their, their truck interior, uh, did piping with wax canvas and it actually got hot and bled some of the wax into the leather. Which was fine. It just it just discolored a little bit. Right, you got did spot the leather then? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, there you go. 144-101 on that so simple tote bag. And then look at this giant bottle of Toco Pro. 500, 500 grams. A little bit goes a long ways, and that'll go a long ways. That'll last you a month or two. Yeah, no kidding. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed it with this new kind of camera setup that we have. Um... Like I said, maybe I can get Chad to throw those leathers up again, that other screen. Just to hit the steal button, Chad. Okay. There you go. So there you go. Hopefully you like the setup that we have going on here. Um, it's something new we're trying to do better, having it better, getting it taken care of, and being able to answer your guys' questions. So uh, come back to that other cam camera there. We got the large tote bag and then the medium sized tote bag. So look for a post on Facebook a little bit later today and uh, enter your chance to win one of them. So thanks guys for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up. I made a mess. <laughs> <laughs>